This video will discuss energy minimization and the basis of geometry optimization. Okay, so let's assume we have some particle here. It has a dimension x, and some of the most interesting points on this potential energy surface are the points where the energy isn't changing. So various points along here, we might want to get to the situation where we have the lowest energy or the highest energy, uh, but a lot of times these points are very interesting to us, so we want to be able to find them. So what categorizes or characterizes these specific kinds of points? So these are where the derivative with respect to, in one dimension, the derivative uh, with respect to that dimension is equal to zero. And that would be called a stationary point in calculus. So what kind of stationary points can we have on this various surface here? Every point that I've labeled here is in fact a stationary point where the first derivative is zero. So we would determine that in calculus based off of the value of the second derivative. So d squared v of x dx squared. Second derivative with respect to x is equal to. And if that was greater than 0, then that would be called a local minimum. So here the derivative is 0. It's concave upward. That's a local minimum. If it is less than 0, that is, as you might guess, a local maximum. Here the first derivative is 0 and it is concave downward. Uh, similarly here, this is also a local minimum, even though it is not the global minimum that we can see. And if it's equal to 0, then we don't know. We might have to look at higher derivatives to figure it out. So you could get a situation like this, a saddle point where it just ends up being, or sorry, an inflection point where it ends up being 0, but then uh, goes up the same direction that it came in on, or it could be, uh, or it could be the third or fourth or fifth derivative that we need to look at to figure out what's going on. Okay, so much as we did in the previous video, we need to generalize these results from one dimension to three n dimensions, because when we have n atoms, we have three n coordinates to worry about, not just the one coordinate that we can nice and easily uh, look at in this dimension. So let's say draw myself a table. We're going to look at the case of 1D. Not in that color though. One dimensional and 3N dimensional. All right, so in 1D, the criterion for being a stationary point was dV of x dx equals 0. And in 3N dimensions, that is going to be that the negative gradient, as we saw in the previous video, the 3n dimensional energy function, depending on x1, y1, z1, x2, y2, z2, all the way up through n atoms, that that is equal to 0. Or more properly, we could say that the magnitude of that is equal to 0. Okay, and then for our second derivative, In order for it to be, or what is the what is the analog of these second derivatives that tell us whether these things are concave upward or concave downward, whether they're minima or maxima? That in three dimensions is going to be the eigenvalues of what is called the Hessian matrix, which we'll discuss more in future videos. So that has a matrix which is 3n by 3n dimensional. And the elements h, i, j are equal to the second mixed partial derivative of v of r to the 3n. So of our 3n dimensional potential energy function with respect to the ith dimension and the jth dimension. So this is our second derivative analog in in 3n dimensions, not only is there the one just the one coordinate to worry about, but we have 3n coordinates, and it's the partial derivatives of them with themselves matter as well. So it's a matrix that you get a bunch of eigenvalues for, and we'll discuss uh, more on that later. Okay, so when we have all these stationary points, and we have all of our various local minima. So we find all of our local minima by finding where the gradient is equal to zero. 
So the lowest value of the energy, of the potential energy at the minimum, is what we would call the global minimum. So the calculus nomenclature, the single lowest value of this function over its entire domain, over the entire uh, domain of the function, would be the global minimum. So in that case, if this is truly the lowest uh, local minimum on this function, this would be the global minimum of our potential energy function. Okay, so then the procedure that we use to find this, the procedure that we use to, to locate where we have our gradient being equal to zero, that is a process called geometry optimization. which we'll be discussing in a little more detail over the next couple of videos. And that is just any algorithm or procedure to minimize the magnitude of the gradient of our energy function. So all these stationary points are places where the derivative with respect to that all coordinates is going to be zero. So these can either be local local minima, local maxima. In three n dimensions, they can also be things called saddle points, which get more complicated. But so we have our stationary points where the first derivative with respect to all coordinates is going to be zero. Um, this gives us local minima and local maxima. And hopefully, if we can find the lowest energy local minimum, we have a global minimum. And the algorithm or procedure which gives us the stationary points uh, from which to compare, which minimizes the gradient of our function, is called geometry optimization.